Thanks for the After that, Matthew. Matthew. Just smile and say, well, uh, Sienna, if I could start with you, please, and, and just a, a word on your own personal preparation for this test match, uh, physically and mentally. We know, uh, you, you know you've had your share of, of challenges. How has it been in, in the build-up week to this test match? Um, yeah, it's it's been good. Obviously, it was tough um, having tested positive for COVID, and obviously I had to follow the protocols. I had to isolate and everything. Um, but obviously, I stayed in tune with what the team was happening. You know, I was in every meeting um, online and and following what the team is doing and looking at all the prep for the week. And obviously, I had to come back and do all the tests, and and I was successful in that. And when I came into training, you know, um, yeah, I felt good. I felt really good. I was fortunate enough not, not to have any symptoms. So, um, yeah, it felt like I, I hadn't been away the, from, from the team for a while. Sierra, it's the, first, it's the third time in the professional era that the British and Irish Lions are playing a World Cup winning Springbok team. I know especially the, the Springboks of 2009, who won the World Cup in 2007, they, they saw playing this series as a, a massive uh, added incentive to their careers as a whole. Do you get the sense from this group uh, that, that it's, it, it's another step up? And, and also, what does it mean to you personally uh, to be leading your country uh, against the Lions? No, it's 100%. Uh, we we on the same mind as the guys in 2007. Um, I mean, I was speaking to, to John Smith last night, you know, he was saying how excited he is, even though he's not, he's not playing. And for us as players, I know, we, we've had our challenges, you know, guys had um, long injuries, they had to work hard to, to, to come back here. And, and that's all we've been speaking about, you know, uh, some of us will never get this opportunity again. It's rare, you know, a guy like uh, France and, and Monet who have it for the second time, you know, but we know uh, most of us here will never get this opportunity again. So we're giving it all we can. And, you know, guys that are not playing as well, they're putting in input because, you know, they want us to be successful and that we, we, we want to win this thing. So that that's the mindset for us. We'll give it everything we can to make sure that we get the result that we want. Let's hear just a last question for you before I ask one of, of Stoker. Uh, just on the back row selection, obviously Kwaka and, and Dwayne, very different types of, of number eight in, in some respects and uh, you and Peter Steff forming two-thirds of the World Cup final in the back row is, is there any sort of change in role uh, in terms of the balance of, of the loose trio? Um, no there's actually no change in role at all um, I mean Kwaka has played here before um, but it, obviously it is tough um, for us not to have doing um, you know he's He's always been a big part of, of, of our, our, our success and he is a completely different player to Kwaka. Um, so Kwaka is going to play the game that he knows and the game that the, the team wants him to play. You know, So I'm looking forward to see what he's going to do but at the end of the day, the three of us have to work together, myself, him and Peter. And I think that will help a lot. You know, there's not a lot of change. It's not like he's a new guy in the system. He's always been there. He knows exactly what to do and, and he knows our strengths and weaknesses. So I'm looking forward to see what he can do. It's an opportunity for him. And yeah, we'll definitely miss Dwayne and we hope he's recovering well. And, and yeah, and hopefully he'll be back soon. Thank you, Sia. Stoker, just uh, from a coaching perspective, you've also had your challenges. Uh, in, in connectivity and, and being together. Have you felt, as a management team, the, the lift and intensity amongst your playing group when you were all able to get together this week on Monday, uh, the magnitude of the occasion? What has it done uh, to the energy uh, within this group? Yeah, Matthew, I think we, we all understand. I think we have made peace with, that, with the fact that we are living in a very, very challenging times, you know, where we we know very well that the team that's going to adapt the best, you know, will have a better chance to win the series, you know. So the same challenges that we were facing as a Springbok team, I think the other teams out there also facing the same challenges. So that is something that we were up for it. We knew that it's going to be a challenge. But once again, after we had all our, our, our players back into the into the squad, you know, getting guys like Sia 
Franz Malerbe, Bongi, and, uh, and, and those gentlemen, Andre Pollard, when they joined the squad, you know, you can just feel the, the vibe. You can just feel the energy. It's just, it's just totally on another level because of these. These are the guys that knows what it takes. You know, they've been there. Some of them, I know, some of them haven't played against British and Irish Lions, but these guys are professional enough to understand when to switch on. You know, so that is something that I've. Uh, the past probably five days that we've enjoyed as coaches because of, if you look at a guy like Sia and uh, having guys like Bongi around, Andre Pola, those guys are, they've got proper proper uh, head of over head over their shoulders. They are very really really uh, experienced and they know how to put the team together. So we've been in a good position this week and uh, we are actually once again excited, Matthew, to. Hit the four lines tomorrow, you know, and uh, hopefully everything will go according to our plan. And, and given the disruptions and the challenges that you've had, how important for you to be able to select uh, the back line, uh, including the return of Makazola and Martimpi on the one wing? Yeah. Started in the Rugby World Cup final, there has to be that level of familiarity there, which will be crucial. Yeah, the the nice thing about Makazola, he, he doesn't get unfit. He comes from the rural areas. So that gentleman has been working for the rest of his life. So naturally, he's a fit player. And uh, yes, missing uh, last week with us, yeah, probably it was uh, sad for him. But once again, I know one thing for sure, that he's very professional. He looks after himself. And, uh, and he's been training well this week. And he knows the plan with him going to this game that He's going to have to push all the way for 80 minutes. And I don't doubt at all that he's got what it takes because of, once again, when it comes to the rural areas, you are naturally fit because of that's your daily life. Everything that you do in the, in the they call it as Lali in Matthew. So in the rural areas, normally they walk. So I'm not worried at all about Makazola's conditioning and fitness. I know one thing for sure, he's going to be up for the challenge tomorrow. Go to the third. I was the COVID. I was in the Go for it. Um, no, I think with the obviously, um, like Coach said earlier, we we are living in in in, in a time of, of uncertainty at the moment, and you know we have to adapt in everything that's happening. Um, we obviously, we would have loved to play um, as everything was scheduled, but it is what what it is right now. But I don't think it gives anyone advantage because we're all training in the same place, um, and um, yeah, and it's all gonna be on Saturday. I think the advantage comes is whose plan is working the most. You know, we've made plans for this, and um, and our plans haven't changed at all. It doesn't matter what we're playing in the world. It is what it is. This is our game plan, and that's what we're gonna do. And we're gonna make sure that we we put it on the field and make sure that it works against their game plan. So that's all. Who's gonna win? And it's all about who's obviously fit and who's gonna be able to remain and do that for 80 minutes. That's where the advantage will come. Who is able to adapt and enforce their game plan for 80 minutes on the field. Um, yeah, obviously our first and foremost thing is to 
make sure um, you know we, we we prepared before we can even say that. So our main focus has been making sure that everything that <coughs> we're doing is on par. We're working hard. Our fitness levels are there. Our plan is there. And obviously, with the time like this, I don't know. It always happens that you know when we have um, big uh, big tournament or a big series like this that. Unfortunately, something does is is not going um, well in our country, and obviously, we are we are South Africans before we are Springbok rugby players, and what affects our people affects us as players, and we gonna do everything we can to make sure we focus on the job that we have to do, and make sure that you know as, Ras, as Coach Rassi said in the World Cup, you know what we do, we in a place of privilege, you know we doing what we love each and every single day, and that we are able to put a smile on someone's face or we are ma- able to, for a moment in time, let everybody else just f- n- just forget or put their problems inside and focus on what we're doing. And when we win, they feel like they win too. And no matter how difficult the situation is, that we are always able to pull together, you know, because we've got families, we've got friends, we've got people who are out there who will suffer during this time, you know, and we want to make sure that while we still have the privilege to be able to do what we what we love, that we give it our ultimate best, and you know we know the people will be behind us, um, no matter what it, what it is they're going through, and we want to make sure we give it everything, and and yeah, and give it our best on Saturday. And if we are able to put a smile on someone's face, that will obviously make us happy and drive us even more to make sure that we don't give up on that field, that we give our ultimate everything. Yeah. And your wife and your wife will also forgive you for leaving her with four kids. Uh, yeah, she will. This true, but Yeah, from my side, as a, as a Springbok team, we don't appoint officials. You know, I think that's a job for World Rugby. So I wouldn't really go deep into that and say we are happy or unhappy with the with with the officials. You know, because of it's not in our hands. You know, but once again, those guys, I know one thing for sure: they're all professional and they all respect that job. You know, and uh, so once again, to us, it doesn't affect us. The main thing is to focus on how we want to play the game. So if they've got a problem with that, unfortunately, they can go and have a chat with the World Rugby regarding that, you know. So, and uh, on the other side, the second question about, what was the second it's question? About? The set piece dominance. Oh, they've said the they've dented our ego. I think from my side, I'm not going to go deep on that one. We were happy as a Springbok team. Once again, if you look at the most important stat in the game, which is the final score, you know, we were we won the game, so I'm not too sure what this is that they've tended against us. And uh, I'm not going to fall in that trap where I play the minds game. I'm not a minds game person, so the game is going to be played between the four lines. So if Gatling is talking about the Eagles, he doesn't really know much about us as South Africans. And I'm not going to go deep on that. So let's wait and see tomorrow after the game, you know, and uh, hopefully we can give people a, a good show of rugby. We know they're going to be tough. We know they're going to be physical, you know, so once again, uh, when it comes to the eagle, we'll see the eagles between the four lines. Thanks, Ray. Um, Lucia, if I could maybe just follow up on that question. I mean, as Daniel mentioned, there's been quite a bit of talk out of the Lions cap about officiating and uh, the team appointment, Rossi's role as a, a water carrier. I mean, has it reached you, that sort of stuff, and maybe quietly? Firing you up a little bit before the, the test match? Oh no, 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 no. I've got, I've, my only job is to play, and my only job is to do what the team is required of me, and my only job is to prepare, and see 
what the Lions are bringing to us, you know, mm-hmm. and, and make sure that I'm ready to play all the other stuff that's out of my control. I can't focus on that. And it definitely doesn't get to us as a team. There are people that have those kind of jobs to look after that kind of stuff. So I leave, it, I leave that up to them. But what I can control is when I turn on the field, mm-hmm. talk to the ref and talk to my teammates around me and prepare for the game. You know, I always believe, like, whatever is supposed to happen on Saturday will happen. So other than that, I, I, I don't even get involved in those kind of things because I've got a far bigger job to do on the field. Salam alaikum. Um, yeah, um, my Hello, COVID. Hello. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> um, listen, my friend. Um, I think, like for me, um, honestly, I didn't have a lot of symptoms. That I was fortunate with that. I didn't have anything at all. I think I was fine by the second day, and so <coughs> that didn't play um, a, a big role in me. I think it was all on the mental thing, you know, just being um, isolating the room. But I. Obviously, that what helped me the most is that I was still part of the meetings, talking the teams, I was viewing videos, and I was adding input to the guys that were playing in the game before, talking to Marco, making sure that Marco knows every single role that he needs to know before he, he, he gets on Saturday, because that's what we're about. Just because you're not playing, that doesn't mean you're, you're off. You're, the next thing for you to do is to make sure that the next guy around you knows his job, he's as prepared as, as much as he can. Uh, because at the end of the day, the most important thing in our group is the Springboks. And, 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 and we want to make sure whether you're playing or not, that you're actually adding value somewhere or another. So in that regard, um, um, I, I was fine because I had a lot of things to, to keep me um, positive and, and to keep me active during the time. Yeah, Ashwak, uh, going back to your question about how we played against them in the World Cup and what we expect from them, once again, this is not a secret. The way we played against them in the semi-final, it was designed for that game, you know, because we knew what they're going to bring to us. We knew all the challenges, you know, and uh, people they forget that before that game, the last time we beat uh, Wales before the semi-final, I think it was about three years, if not, mm-hmm. if not four years, you know. So, and then when we did our analysis to look back of whatever the things that we were doing that we needed to work on, you know. So once again, so everyone is talking about the kicking game in that game. So that was something that we mainly focused on, knowing that, you know, without giving too much, we we wanted to make sure that we, we're going to stay in that fight, you know, because they are good at what they've planned. They're good at executing their plan. So it was our our plan also to counter whatever they're going to bring on the table in that, in that game. And yes, one thing for sure that uh, you'll expect a lot of kicking game in this game also. Uh, if you look at the influence of the guys that are in that team, uh, a guy like Stuart Hawk, who's really, really got a good boot, you know, uh, uh, Bega who's also very good. And even the guys that will come off the bench, Konomari and, uh, and Farrell, you know, so those guys, they're going to they gonna challenge us. But once again, I all, I've been saying this throughout the whole week, is that when it comes to playing against the British and Irish Lions, we're going to have to be at our best in all the departments. We know They've got a good kicking game, and also on a day when you give them space out wide with the, with their outside backs, they will be dangerous. And also, we can't ne- neglect the physical impact that a guy like Duan will bring in that back line. You know, I think they've selected a strong side physically, but also with pace. So, uh, we'll we've got good plans also in place. And yeah, like Sia mentioned earlier on, I think the team that's going to execute their plan very well. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think, uh, and be desperate for 80 minutes. I think that's the team that's going to win tomorrow, and hopefully that will be us. Thank you. Thank you. Next question from Hi, first one for Swandile. Um, will Brassi be running the water tomorrow? And secondly, for Sia, how confident are you personally that you'll match fit, having had that time in isolation? And so little rugby for the box over the last 
Yes, uh, to keep it short and sweet, Russell will be running the water tomorrow. Uh, uh, that is his role now in the team, to assist Jacques, Jacques Nina as a head coach. So he will be there and he will be running around, bringing water on the field to the players. And we as a Springbok rugby, we are happy with that. Um, yeah, I, I feel good. I feel good. I've prepared in the training sessions and um, yeah, and felt like um, I hadn't missed um, training for a couple of days. So I do feel good. But obviously, I do know um, that if um, it gets to a place where um, I'm tired and I can't go anymore, I know my coach is right here. They know me. They, they know the signs when I'm tired. They will definitely take me off the field, whether that's early in the first half or in the second half. It doesn't matter. That's just the code and that's what we live by. That's our motto in our team. If you've given up, you've given everything you can and you just can't anymore, it's someone else that's sitting on the bench can definitely do the same work as you do and our coaches are very good at noticing that and making those subs in the right in the right time so yeah I'm full confident to to go as hard as I can and not hold back anything not save myself because I know what's waiting in the bench is just gonna turn it up e even more Yeah, no, hundred percent. I think you answered it there, and also we have depth. You know, we we have a lot of guys who can play here, and you know, there are guys who are at home now who can who can also come back. But our main focus is this first test, and we're gonna do everything in our power to make sure that we we win the first test and we give everything to that. And the second one, we worry about that when the final whistle goes. So we're not gonna worry about the future test because I mean, this is this is a, a big series. It's not gonna come. Um, another 12 years so, and as, uh, most of us will not get this opportunity again so we don't have the privilege to be thinking about we, we worrying about the championship or anything like that or oh, even the second test match we worry about this first one and what happens after that if guys are burning out they, uh, someone else will come back and it's an opportunity for someone else and that's why we work as hard as we can and we prepare each other and we make sure everybody knows what to do just in case if someone falls out someone else will just fit in Um, it hasn't changed. My role has always been the same. Make sure I look after our breakdown and we've got natural um, fetches in our team. We have guys that can put their hands in in the breakdown and when the opportunity presents itself, I um, I put my hand in too. Um, but yeah, we, we, we have guys in the team that can actually go in the breakdown. You know, uh, some of them are not the, the, the loose forwards. They play in other position. Um, but my most important thing is to make sure I tackle, secure our own breakdown and put pressure on their breakdown too. So, and you know, and PT is the same. He's a hard guy, he'll get us forward momentum, he'll make the big tackles and he's a, he's a workhorse. We've got souls who can go all day long too. So we all have our roles and nothing has changed for me. Same role as I played in the, in the, in the World Cup or against Georgia, I've got exactly the same role. I mean, Kwaka, you know, he, he is very good at the breakdown too. So I'm not going to chase 
um, just to try and compete against the opposite number um, across me to try and get as many still as I can. We've got a system, stick to the system. If an opportunity presents itself, I'll get in there. But for me, I have to look after our old ball. Awesome. That's it. Um, you, you clearly haven't had anything from our side and we've never been that kind of team and we'll never be that kind of team. We're going about our business, we're focused on the game, we're not going to focus on one player, you know, so um, that definitely doesn't come from our side. So I don't, we, I don't know anything about that because we haven't came out and said this is what we're going to do, we're going to be chirping. No, we don't do that. We save our energy for the work that we need to do. And you know, very, you know very well we are good people as South Africans. If it wasn't for the pandemic, we would have surely invited to one for a bright place. I think from my side, first things first, as a coaching staff, I think we are in a good position because of, if you look at the squad that we've got here, probably about 13 players that will be playing this game start at the World Cup final. So it's only Kwaha who was also part of the World Cup squad. And then Oxenje in that match 15 that is starting. Oxenje is the only player who was not with us in the World Cup. So once again, if you're saying we are underdone, uh, geez, we had about more than three years with these guys, you know, and uh, and there's something that people must make peace with it is that, listen, as a South African team, do you understand? There are certain things that we can't run away from them, you know, they are our strengths. So we can't just go and comment about, for example, All Blacks and say they know they need to change their style of play where they must not pass the rugby ball too much. That is who they are, that's how they were raised at a young age. So same goes with us. When it comes to the physical side of the game, it is in our DNA, you know, and uh, when it comes to the set pieces, we do take pride in what we do when it comes to that. When there's opportunities for us to play fancy, good running rugby, we need to end it first. You know, we need to make sure that we get momentum in the game. So once again, we're not going to comment much about what people are saying about this, our style of play. And once again, I'm going to say this. If it means it's going to win us the World Cup, we will carry on playing that way. If it means we're going to win the series because of the way we are playing, that is the most important thing to us. After 10 years to 20 years, people will forget how we play the game. Some, they will even forget the final score, but they will remember that the Springboks won the World Cup in 2019. So unfortunately, I'm not going to go deep on our style of play. We are very proud to be South Africans and we enjoy the way we're playing rugby.